the world is run on hate and fear. That's the entire summary of the speech given by Tanya Degrachoff on episode 12 of A Military Chronicles of a Little Girl, also known as Yojo Sinki. This is Tanya's ideology and philosophical outlook on life from her perspective, claiming that human beings themselves are nothing but irrational beasts. And the scary thing about that statement is that she's absolutely right. In the finale of The Military Chronicles of a Little Girl, the Empire was disconnected from their soldiers and lost the war due to their strategists being disconnected from their soldiers emotionally, not understanding the way they felt regarding the war in general, creating a momentary victory for the Empire. Their lack of understanding of the emotional concepts of war is the reason why the entire series continues because they didn't factor in the emotional response of their enemy and slowly looked at it, the situation from a rationalist point of view not including the irrational response was to follow which was hate and vengeance upon the empire for destroying their nations and countries. Much like how Tanya herself in a previous life was obviously killed out of hate, people act on irrational responses and even logical and rational responses out of hate or malice. For example, by the end of the entire anime itself, Tanya's rational goal of living a peaceful mundane life after completing her campaign in the military is undermined by her very hate for being X. Yes, from the start of the show itself, she hated being X, however, comparing the start of the show to the very end of the anime, her actions appear to be irrational and out of pure emotion of hatred for being X, which causes her to fight until she can dethrone being X herself from being God. At this point in the story, she's engrossed and fueled by her malice for being X, she doesn't appear to realize she's lost sight of who she once was, being the once rational and tactical salary man. It is true the improvement to her characters were forced upon her by the environment she's been in, causing her to look at things from an emotional and irrational point of view, creating a somewhat pseudo enlightenment in comparison to all her other colleagues in the military. However, at this point in the story, she appears to be fueled by her own hate and malice for being X demonstrated at the ending speech of the entire anime. This ideology even applies to our reality despite how unsensical it sounds. As it turns out, everything we do in life is fueled by some form of hate, malice, fear, or envious nature we all have within us. However, we don't admit it or justify that emotion because we don't believe it exists ourselves or refuse to admit that it's in ourselves that we could have this darkness lingering within us, revealing the evil within. With this sort of revelation, it causes you to reflect on your actions of the past and your transgressions of the future, making you wonder why are you doing this? Is it because I'm envious of someone else? Or is it because I really want this myself? Our dreams and our aspirations are the catalyst for hatred that begin to brew. If you have ever idolized someone and decided to choose a certain career path due to the aberration you have for that person, your very idolization will eventually become some form of hatred as your life goes on. We put our idols and people we aspire to be such on high pedestals we almost forget ourselves they are human too, much like we are already. As time goes on and as we try to achieve our goals to become just like our idol, as time passes day by day our love towards that person will become irrational spite with us questioning why we can't be exactly like that person or better. We undermine ourselves as individuals stooping down to the level of inner irrational beasts when it comes to our emotions, justifying the most heinous of acts to achieve our dreams. We lie, cheat, and steal and might even kill as well as undermine our fellow man to simply get a one-up advantage on other people because we as individuals, to a certain degree, always need to be better than someone else to some extent because no one wants to be looked down upon or at the bottom of the food chain and everyone everywhere wants to be noticed for their hard work in attempts to actually try to be something or someone. If you don't understand or struggling to comprehend what I'm saying, the entire ideology itself is quite literally absurd and irrational. It's solely based around our emotions, taking a somewhat nihilistic perspective on life claiming that us as individuals are capable of doing anything depending on the circumstance and our emotional state. As a collective species of humans, we simply strive to live the best of our abilities, always seeking something better or a deeper philosophical inherent purpose, no one becomes something or someone solely based around the idea of love or the betterment of mankind. Just like how we instinctively do everything for a reason and not from the kindness of our hearts, which is a rare scenario. Ultimately, a majority of the time we do the things we do as people for all the wrong reasons. We go to the board meeting at work because we have to one-up our competition and we're forced to be there by obligation. We make fun of each other and put each other down, not to make that person feel bad, but to remind us what we should not become 
and our fears as who we shouldn't desire to be. We reluctantly do our community service hours in high school, not to help people, but so we can graduate high school and move on with our lives and ourselves. We go out of our way to do X, Y, or Z tasks to simply improve our own conditions for livings or make connections that will help us in our future. It's only natural to better ourselves as individuals, but sometimes we reluctantly do these things to seek acknowledgement from others or to simply do them to show that what we're capable of in terms of qualifications of tasks or simply to look better than another person. It's human nature to subconsciously undermine someone showing our superiority in comparison or in contrast to ourselves and someone else. It's also subconsciously embedded into ourselves without us being fully aware of why we truly do the things we do. That's just the social norm and societal standards. We're just all cogs in a giant wheel making the world go around based around the principle of capitalism feeding off each other and one-upping ourselves in a constant fight to hold down a position in a giant competition of life. We as people are rather artificial beings 90% of the time than actual real humans that are our true selves which is 10% of the time. As we enter high school and adulthood, our true nature begins to take form and we become artificial dolls that do things out of fear or hatred. For example, we will show respect to our colleagues and our bosses out of fear that we will get fired and become homeless. If we told our bosses or our superiors how we really felt about the situation and spoke freely, there is a 8 out of 10 chance you would get fired from your job. But likewise, we respect our elders when spoken to, we help our friends and colleagues when asked for assistance most of the time. We study hard naturally as students, like we're supposed to. As an intern or a trainee, we do everything asked of us because we want the actual position. As an employee, we respect the superiors because they technically own us and fuel our livelihoods. As a commander or leader, you show guidance to your subordinates you're in command of or leading. The point I'm trying to make is, whatever role we're given in society, we look the part and play the part to the letter. We do what is expected of us because that's the social norm, and that's just what people do. It's artificial, it's not us as individual people, it's a facade or a persona we give ourselves so we can operate within society created by the invisible hand of society itself. It's forced upon us, we are obligated to have this outlook and view on life. That's what we are subtly unaware of until we are enlightened by some external force or power. It's much like how the hypothetical imperative and the categorical imperative we had discussed in our Tanya is not evil video. We do things not because we're kind, we do things because we wish to seek a very specific response from that person or being. We don't operate on our goodwill like Kant suggested we should as people. We operate on the belief that we can generate a specific response from someone getting what we need to operate in society. As well as that, we obstruct our daily life of entertainment and other forms of media to distract us from our cold pessimistic reality that tells us all we have to do is work hard and we can become who we want to be because that's capitalism. If you fail to do this or have failed to reach your goal, it's your own fault because you haven't tried hard enough. Instead of being artificial in our emotions and feelings, it's more of the fact that we're much like humunculus that are slaves to our own desires while at the same time fearing and hating what we shouldn't become and do. To give a personal example, I've been friends with this Japanese woman whose name is on a need to know spaces for two years now. For those two years, she's been lying to me about who she is and her occupation. It's only been about two months since she told me the truth about who she is and what she really does for work. The essential lie she told me was that she's a small Japanese idol who sung various songs and did whatever idols do regarding the music industry in Japan. She went to singing practice and constantly practiced dancing every day. Now the initial internet reaction to this is you're a dumbass for believing her, it's an internet stupid and you're gullible. Well to be honest there was no reason for me not to believe her, we had been friends for a decent amount of time and she asked me what I did for work and I said you know I work part time on video games sometimes and I'm a university student. And that's when she was all like yeah I go to university too and I'm an inspiring idol. Naturally, at this point, when someone claims to work on video games or be an idol, people want to generally see proof, and that's the response that was given. Well, the proof for me is being in the credits of the video games and having a massive amount of Steam keys for said product or game I'm working for, and the proof she presented was, you know, some content footage and things of that variety that you don't need to see. 
But the point is that she lied about it and fabricated all the information so I would believe she was an idol, but that was very much a double-edged sword, or in this case a double-edged lie with one truth and another lie. In reality, she really did want to be an idol, she legitimately sung songs and practiced singing and dancing every day on her free time, but the reality of her life situation was that she simply worked in a cafe as a waitress. She dreamed to be an idol and tried her best to become one, but for whatever reason she just wasn't noticed by anyone and couldn't become an idol to any capacity despite trying her damned hardest. Now as I said previously in this video and on the philosophy video of Yojo Sinki, people don't do things without reason or purpose. We might not know this inherent reason or purpose right away, but it's always there lingering in the background. The reason she had lied to me despite me and her being the same age, which is 20, is solely because she hated and was ashamed of who she was as an individual compared to myself and the other people she was around. Essentially, she was envious and hated the fact that she was working in a cafe while I was working on video games that featured cute anime girls and things of that commodity while she was stuck working at a lowly cafe. She told me she found the idea depressing and decided to fabricate a world where she was simply on top of everything and she was successful as a human being somehow. She even admitted that there was no reason for her to lie, she was just ashamed of herself and hated herself for failing despite the entire situation being out of her control. She didn't lie to me about who she was out of spite or malice, she did it solely because she hated herself irrationally and she was ashamed of who she was compared to other people basically saying it wasn't supposed to be like this, life wasn't supposed to go this way for me, and I tried my best and I'm still doing everything I can, but it's just not working. It didn't make any rational sense of why she would do this, she just did it because it somehow made her happy at the time, and affirmed her existence to the pessimistic reality we all live in. Lies and truths are two powerful concepts. If you can get enough people to believe in a lie, that lie will eventually become truth, while the absolute truth that once existed will fade into oblivion. If you can get enough people to believe in the truth, that truth will become absolute in its entirety. Nothing will oppose that truth, even though it might be a lie, because ideas never die, just like philosophy. But there are times in life just like this one when it's good for a lie to completely overshadow the truth, diminishing it to solidify who we are as people even though that lie might be a fraction of the truth itself. Her essential mindset was that if I can get someone to believe this one truth and actually believe in me, that lie will become truth and maybe somehow that reality will come into fruition, into reality becoming the absolute truth in its entirety, which is completely irrational but it's the things we do to grasp onto hope to accomplish our goals. Even if that includes us to undermine ourselves and the people around us spreading lies and cheating or even killing people to justify our means to an end. The things we do to achieve our goals and desires are quite literally irrational and make no sense at all. However, we do them because it feels like progress, and it makes us feel happy, and it allows us to feel alive as human beings, and more importantly, it allows us to feel something, or at least something good, but at least it's something, isn't that right? But picking back up with the discussion, so that leads to the question of what happens when you give it your all, and continue to give it your all, but your dreams never come true. The answer is you simply begin to hate yourself and what you once idolized to a certain degree, where it causes you to undermine yourself and those around you. It's one of the most lowest points we can reach as a human being, literally grasping for a rope that will help us achieve our desires so we cannot hate ourselves and what we dream to be, envying what we once held high on a pedestal. But things like hope, forgiveness, and kindness exist in this world, so there is something brighter in our possible future, hopefully. Now, not to dwell on this topic because it's personal, but the inevitable reason why she told me the truth was because on that day, she was walking past a shrine and she met a monk that basically told her it wasn't good to keep lies in her heart, and that she should always tell the truth and avoid lying when she could, so at that moment she should decided to tell me the truth. Me and her are still friends, and I don't view her differently, but the point I'm trying to make here in this video is that we do things out of hatred whether we know it or not. It's quite scary to actually think about it. It makes you evaluate your life choices and forces you to discover why you're really doing what you're doing. Is it really because you enjoy doing it, or is it out of some sort of subvert spite or hatred you don't even notice yourself? The artificial fear and hatred we have toward each other displays itself in false or fake emotions or opinions we make to simply meet the quota of social norms and societal standards. This all ties in with the philosophical standpoint of absurdism, 
Maybe we should all view life as a nonsensical and non-ethical amalgamation of spontaneous and random events, believing that life is irrational and discovering or searching for meaning in our existence is truly in conflict for the very reason we exist in the first place. Believing that there is no reason, we're just here, we should just accept everything and enjoy everything in life how it is and not search for any meaning to affirm our existence or reason for living as individuals. But if one truth exists in this world is that the world is run and spins around the idea of the fact that we all hate something and that hate has driven us to do irrational things like the real beast we are as a species. Like how in Yojo Senki, the human in the background is foolishly fighting the dragon out of hate or for honor. The reason will never be known, all we could do is speculate on the reason why they're fighting. But in the very end, the world is run on hate and our desires and aspirations. And that's the end of the video. Seto, don't do this! Your mind has been clouded by darkness! Wrong! For the first time, everything is clear! Come forth, White Dragon! I have no choice but to fight! I summon the Dark Magician! Prepare to feel the power of two generations in one attack! He's right, Pharaoh. Their magic is twice as strong now. Now, my dragon, attack with white lightning! Dark magic attack! 